Hello everybody, it's Rich Cespedes and uh, I'm here uh, with a video uh, to talk about um, the spirituality and how the body and brain and how the living and the spirit world kind of have similarities and a lot of big differences and how just it, how all of it just kind of functions, you know, coexists together. So I want to start off first by talking about uh, the mundane state of, uh, of how the living how the 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 world of the living lives basically Mon uh, like when um, when people talk about um, mundane um, we're anchored in this body and be and and mundane is a manifestation it's a naturalistic manifestation it it, it, it develops because we are, the spirit is not able to be free and because the spirit is not able to be free so easily without proper uh, meditation all that stuff but like out of body experiences you experience mundane ordinariness and uh, that's that's how the mundane is mundane is basically a tool um, it's something bad it could be something good or bad it depends on you as a reincarnate if used wrong it can cause a lot of stress sorrow internal conflicts um, anger um, uh, uh, um, social problems personal love life problems everything under the sun that's negative socially negative internally whatever mundane can lead to that but people take the mundane um, not seriously and they take it for granted the mundane can be used it's we're part of this earth to live ordinary lives with no real sense of power within us and it's on purpose so that we can experience the mundane it's kind of like a river that goes down the mountains naturally the mundane is there as a tool to teach you to observe and learn and to uh, and to calculate and to create and to ponder about life and ponder and look and look at the ordinariness of textures and details of your reality and just to sit to sit and look and think about life and the emotions and the, the combination of those things the mundane is the activator of uh, of our personal selves you know and the activator of pondering and thinking and creating and inventing and that's the thing, the living takes mundane and boringness um, for granted, you know. But now we're just barely unveiling the truth right now about spirituality and it's about who we really are. We're gods and we're infinite. And we're living normal little petty lives just so we could learn, you know. It's, it's, it's a wild thing, but it's just, we're just doing this so we could just enlighten ourselves and climb that ladder. And uh, mundane is something that can be good or bad, you know, it can lead you to sorrow and sadness, not being able to understand and have patience with people is a mundane act of it, kind of like a mundane kind of thing. Uh, not not having patience, you're mundane, you don't have patience, you, you have anger towards people, or, uh, you don't understand to have respect for yourself or others. You know, that's like a, where the level of mundane can be very sour and bubbly and poison feelings or it could be something inspiring or, or inspirational and inventive and uh, enlightening. So it's a very proper balance, and basically we're just puppets, and the brain, um, the brain is basically, uh, the body is like a puppet, the brain, um, I want to talk about now, about um, the specifics of what the brain does, and how it affects this, the, uh, the soul, and the soul is basically a holographic data carrier, it's a recorder, that's what our soul is, our consciousness, our soul, and our soul is our consciousness, it's a holographic data carrier, and all it does is that the body is just a recorder. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, the body is a recorder and the soul is like a chip that carries the information, the data. It's a holographic data chip. And, and the body is like a, it's like a computer that, uh, that uh, translates in external information into ones and zeros and processes and saves that memory and data in the spirit. Uh, uh, the spirit records it inside of it. That's what the human body is. It, the body gives and takes. It takes and gives. It's just, it's just a big old, it's just a machine to look and learn and experience and give sensation and to feel and to calculate and take in information. And um, the brain is basically, um, the, the, the spirit is just a, a data carrier. It, it, it's just like a chip, you know. Um, once you remove that chip from the computer, it, it no longer is able to pro uh, save any more information. The spirit is a chip and the body is like a computer that puts the information in the chips to save it. 
is like movies and music and all that stuff. And the spear is like a holographic thing and uh data carrier thing. And um the 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 brain, the, the spirit is like is both directly and indirectly involved with the with um with the function of the brain. The spirit doesn't necessarily need to need the brain, it doesn't really need it. But the brain is kind of the way I see it, I mean the spirit is kind of half-assly kind of involved with you know the brain the spirit uses the occipital lobe it uses it but loosely very loosely it, it's not so uh embedded and it, it, you know and it, well, it depends on the individual how serious they take because we're reincarnated and it depends on the individual if they uh if they take this living being seriously then they fuse the living body with the spirit and really fuse memory in the holographic spirit and uh but but basically um the spirit doesn't need the brain to see or feel or think but the brain what it is is like a hammer to a nail the brain is there to uh, make sure that it when it calculates information that the synapses and the neural activations um when it when when those synapses and neural activations activate occipital lobe or anywhere the emotional state the living system the frontal lobe of thought all those things it's like a, it's like a hammer into a nail this hammers in the information and memory into the soul and what it does the brain it just it, it because it creates a, a quantum thermal energy in the quantum level and in the quantum foam of space and time and it fuses itself and it combines and locks in that information of emotions memories experiences visual content into the soul and that's why the brain is like uh it has uh, um it's basically like a but it needs to have this kind of you know inter complex interworking so that it can the brain is interconnected with space and time and, and in turn space and time is interconnected with the soul and it's just all connected to itself but the brain is just a, a big processor a big brain it just calcula a big computer you know it just sends in the information it's like a hammer to a nail the hammer is the brain and the nail is the soul and the hammer just sticks in the information to make sure that it cements into the soul you know, and how it does that is by the neural activations of the synapses going on and the neural activity and the blood flow of the thoughts of emotions of your experiences of your lives gets recorded. The emotional state of your life gets recorded. Um, 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 the visions of your life gets recorded in there. And, and those synapses and the neural activations activate the smallest level, sending in the information through space and time, the quantum phone. The quantum phone is just interconnected to, to, to the soul. And just kind of transfer the information to the smallest level so it can get in there, cement it. And that's what, uh, that's how I believe uh, the brain works. The brain is just, um, just basically a big computer, a big, uh, a big robot, a big uh, thing that just get, gives and takes information. It's just here to receive and learn, and experience and be physical with things. But the spirit is directly and directly involved. That's why we're able to do telekinesis. Uh, that, that's why we do telekinesis because when we do telekinesis, we're in a balanced level of ourselves. We're in a balanced level of our emotional state, and um, and and um, and and one other thing that is a real big home run hitter. Uh, it gets it just it sends it home. It, and what I'm trying to say is that the spirits are the most powerful telekinetics. They can do anything without even thinking, just by thinking, just by having a. a, a an emotional kind of sissy kind of thing they can move a chair you know little little thought they can set a fire to something it isn't you know like this the spirits they have so much power it is they're connected with everything around them it's like instant but with people the reason why we have trouble being pyro uh pyro doing top pyrokinesis and hydrokinesis and telekinesis and everything else is because the body and the brain hinders us the emotional state that hinders us to be able to connect and be in an emotional balance. Because the thing is though is that the reason why telekinetics are able to do these things so easily is because when the spirit leaves the body, in the spirit world, what I believe is that there is uh, the reason why spirits in a balanced and always in a constant mood of joy and happiness and understanding and observance, constantly every day, every day of their spiritual lives in the spirit world is ghosts, is because in the spirit world, the, the, the spirit world is, uh, they intersect the spirit world's energy and, and the energy intersects them. 
And so um, the, the energy is constant. It's in a constant flow. It never fluctuates or, or vibrates too high or low, creating um, uneasy emotional state or, or unease emotions or uh, discomfort for them. That's why heaven is bliss because the energy levels there are are basically equilibrium all the time, constant all the time. One straight and arrow flow of energy, and that energy is uh, basically uh, it's um, it never uh, never goes too high or too low, and so that's why they're always calm and relaxed. And the, the beta waves are always there, you know, like everything's fine. But when you're in the living, you're in the body. When you're in the body, the reason why we have emotional problems and, and we react to things and the mundane affects us. And the reason why um, we're angry and we get upset and agitated is because the brain waves are always going up and down. And our perception of our reality affects us internally, you know, but it's all for learning process. And that, that's why, because the, the brain can create an equilibrium of bliss, but but the way that we perceive our reality, how we want to perceive it, and how we take information, situations, it all depends on us and how we want to react to it. You know, and the brain, uh, it goes up and down with emotions and interactions and situations with people, and, it, and, and that's all just for learning process. It's crazy, but it's for the spirit to learn and gather the information to take to the world so they get a life review of what they what happened in their lives and they can learn and they can step up that that ladder uh to go higher and the ladder i believe in the spiritual world is actually more um there's more uh, bars to climb on this ladder there's more bars to climb on the ladder and more steps to step up on the staircase of enlightenment here trevor seven talks about these seven levels or eight ten levels or whatever of enlightenment but that's only because the body's restricting the further the furthering of enlightenment to higher levels of enlightenment. There's higher levels, I believe, but only in the spiritual realm can you reach those levels. And only through learning, being reincarnated over and over again as a human, learning about your experiences, can you bring the information to the spirit world and climb that ladder to learn and be a better individual, to be more enlightened, and to step up and go up higher into this world. And, be, and I think that the final level of this enlightenment it's basically fusing yourself with energy, with awesome energy of God. The ultimate level is to basically be God and to feel and think and be in bliss forever. That's the last level of enlightenment. You know, to never have pain or nothing. But it's kind of mind-boggling how it can be. And see, uh, thinking and thoughts um, is also a problem too. Like in the spiritual world, they do not think too much or ponder. The mundane in the living makes you ponder and think because it's boring and you're constantly seeing the same thing every day and seeing problems every day and the energy is not equilibrium it's not equalized it's not constant not like in the spirit world you know there um, and that's what causes conflictions you know the, the process of thinking it messes up our perception of our reality and and uh, like people who write Bibles and everything you know, they, they write about Bibles and they, they try to make it too theatrical. They try to add anger and, and revenge in it. But they're only adding things that, that the mundane has affected them negatively. The spiritual world is not negative. It's not revenge. It's not die and go to hell. It's a perfect place, place of bliss. And uh, the mundane causes people to ponder and fear death. To ponder and fear what's behind the corner. What's there? You know, the mundane causes us to think too much and to be unrational and to be suspicious of your fellow man instead of loving them and embracing them and that's the problem but the but but we put ourselves in these shoes you know it's just a game life and death is a game we're gods and we're infinite and we put ourselves here so that we can learn about the mundane crap it's like being in a video game when you pass away a bit, uh, when you pass away man being a spirit is your true being that's your true existence being in the living body is not your true existence this is just a shell this is just a mechanism a vehicle a triple seven says a temporary ride when you go up to heaven you are the perfect person you've always wanted to be 
You are your true self when you're a spirit. You are you. You are truly you. You're more you than you are now. You let yourself be and let go. You know, and, and, and the living life that we see now in reality, which is just simulation, is not us because we're struggling with ourselves and personalities. And uh, we can also reach higher in the mundane by meditating, walking away from the mundane so we could find that equilibrium like the spirits have. By meditation, we can find equilibrium. But, you know, the true self is your dead self. Your true self is your spirit out of your body. You exiting your body and being a spirit is your real you. This is not you. Your world, the, the way you live now is not you. And uh, I believe in that. And this is just my ideas of, of how the spirit world works and how it interacts with the living and how the body and brain works. And, and that those are just my theories. And uh, I believe them to be uh, genuinely at least uh, unique, if not unoriginal or whatever I've already thought about it. But those are just my ideas about the spiritual living world. And I hope you guys liked it. I hope it wasn't boring. I hope it didn't go off too much. I tried to put as much as I can in there. Again, it's Rick's but it is. Thank you guys for watching. God bless.